Hi sir, my name is Mona Krishna, son of Thanaval. I am from BMMA section 1 group 1. Uh, now we want to do a video about uh, lab 4. The, lab, the title of lab 4 is Display, Inspection, Removal and Refitting. Uh, my group mate name is Ansel, uh, John, Jackson, Boone, Melina and me. Now let's see the objective of, uh, for our lab 4. The objective is to inspect the condition of disc brake assemble. The second one is to replace part of disc brake system. And the third one is to name all part of disc brake system. Let's see the assemble video about the disc brake system. Great job. Ciao. Dekat dia punya plate, setting dia punya kosong Setting digest punya meter kosong Sepatutnya dia kena letak atas plate yang ada ni Yang ada minit dah batu dia Oh ni lah, kita tak ada plate besi Nanti saya cuba cari tengah dia tak ada besi Okey, sentuh saja Sentuh, lah batu awak Itulah sebab dia juga, kalau anda jawab kena apa-apa dia kena kosong. Dia kena kosong. Okey. 
So bila dah kosong, seorang belajar kena pusing. Tengok dia pergi ke arah negatif ataupun positif. Kapu nak kapu? Okey, dia dalam ciri betul. Kalau tegak betul. Kalau negatif dia dalam kuku. Negatif. Jarum ni ni dia tertendang ke belakang. belakang. Kalau dia ada bonggol positif. So dia boleh jadi kita tiga keadaan lah. Kalau dia betul-betul flat dia surface dia akan kosong je tapi mustahil lah. Dia akan ada positif, dia akan lebih pada kosong jarum dia macam ni. Jarum dia sini kosong. Sini negatif sebab dia menghala ke bawah. Kalau dia menghala 10, 20, ni positif. Boleh? So pusing, tengok, tengok jarum tu. Sekarang ni positif. Sekejap lagi dia boleh jadi. Ha, ni Dia besar. Good morning to Dr. Zahir. I'm Ju Izwan from BMMA S1 slash 1. And today I will be presenting this question uh, from lab. Okay. Uh, the question is, based on your finding, what is the condition of brick pad? Should it be replaced with the new pad? So a brick pad, usually it's around 8 to 12 millimeter for a new brick pad. So, uh, for minimum to change a new brick pad, it's around 3 millimeter and below. So, as you can see, the inboard brick pad thickness is 0 0.64 millimeter. It's quite worn out and need to be replaced with a new one to avoid any accident and uh, any malfunction from the brick system. So, for the outboard brick pad, thickness is also 0 0.65 millimeter. 695 millimeter so it's around 0 0.7 millimeter so it's quite worn out this two brick pad so i think it should be replaced a new brick pad to avoid any accident or slip or any brick system malfunction thank you morning sir uh i am botinsin and i will present the question two of the discussion which is these two causes of rotor thickness variation and what is the correct repair procedure of thickness variation so the causes of the rotor thickness variation is the force of uneven clamping and rotating and this normally is caused by the improper installation of the caliper or the improper installation of the rotor and another one is irregular bread friction material pattern and this normally is caused by using the cheapest uh, bread pad or install the bread pad which is not following the instruction of the manufacturer so the correct way to repair the thickness variation is machine machining the rotor by using the red letter machine so the Procedure is first we put the fitting part and the spring to the machine and make sure it is in the correct position and center with the axle of the machine. 
Then we put the rotor to the, mach the machine and we attach the cap uh, to the rotor and tighten the rotor by using the nut and before we starting the machine and make sure the nut is tightened to avoid the rotor moving during the cutting process and we change the setting of the machine to the rotor and then we need to adjust the cutter uh, the center of the cutter uh, to the center of the rotor and then we move we move the cutter to near near the rotor and can touch the rotor and then we install the, the vibration temper then we start the machine and we adjust the cutter bread to touch the rotor and when the uh, when the cutter bread is touched the rotor then we set the uh, the knob to the inner knob to zero and then and after that we adjust we turn the outer knob to set how many uh, millimeter that we need to cut for the rotor after that we turn the inner knob to zero again and the process is repeat to another side of the rotor after, after all the setting is done then we can start the cutting process then we let the machine to cut the rotor until a clean surface of the rotor come out after that we uh, a fully recovery of the uh, rotor is done so that is from me thank you Hello everyone, my name is Hansel Charles and I am from KDMMA as one slash one. So for this lab, I'll present about the question three, which is the what, which is what do you understand about runout measurement data? All right. So runout measurement introduction. Okay, runout is how much one given reference feature or features vary with respect to another datum when the part is rotated 360 degree around the datum axis. It is essentially a control of a circular future and how much variation it has with the rotational axis. Measuring the runout will allow a service technician to determine if the rotors are wrapped, sorry, warped or improperly installed, allowing corrective action to be taken. So runout measurement data. The runout measurement data is used to describe the amount of wobble occurring when an element rotates. Runout are measured with a dial indicator with the rotor mounted on the vehicle. On the bra this braking system, the brake rotor runout must be minimized so that the brakes do not shake and vibrate when engaged. There are thick or thin parts of the rotor which can cause the feeling of variation in the clamping pressure between the brake pads and the rotor. So, the runout measurement usually measured with a dial gauge indicator uh, with the rotor mounted on the vehicle. When measuring the runout measuring uh, when measuring the runout data using the dial gauge, there must not be any movement or vibration on the vehicle or to the parts that need to. If there is any movement or vibration, we might get a false or incorrect reading. So let's look at how runout measurement is done in this lab. In this lab, the runout measurement data is conducted at the end of the lab session after the disassembly process. So firstly, the contact point of the dial gate should be in contact with the rotor disc. Then the dials initially should be adjusted to their zero point. Once the dials are zero, slowly rotate the rotor disc. The runout measurement reading obtained <coughs> reading obtained from the dial gauge in this lab contains both positive and negative reading. <coughs> Next is the positive and negative reading when measuring the runout measuring data. Okay. So 
So positive sign indicates that the thick part is formed on the surface of the rotor disc. The thick part is, in this case, is the presence of the thick part in this case is the presence of rust. So the surface is slightly thick at some particular area on the rotor disc surface. Negative sign indicates that the thin part is formed on the surface of the rotor disc. The thin part in this case is the presence of scratches throughout the rotor disc. So the thin part in this case is the surface is slightly inside compared to the uh, normal surface. So the dial gauge fluctuates positive and negative reading as both of these conditions present on the rotor disc surface. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. Suggestion I'm from MMA. First slash one. So the discussion number five. This question for what is your finding of grafting or lock pin straightness check? What can happen to your discrete system in grafting lock or lock pin is not straight? So my answer is my finding for the guide pin or lock pin straightness check for this lab is, is in good condition because it enables to perform the a circular motion when it is given a force at a straight ground surface. If the guide pin or lock pin is not straight, the calipers might be bent or binding with guide pin resulting in uneven pad wear. So if the guide pin is bent, the caliper might be jammed because the caliper cannot move freely and malfunction. For further damage, it may cause one slice bend or damage mounting brackets, swollen or hardened guide seals or lack of lubrication. So, thank you. Good day, everyone. Today, I'm going to explain about composition for lab display. Based on this lab, we did inspection the condition of this brake for every part of it. We did make removal of the these brakes and assembly back to the original place. We also did naming all parts of this brake assembly. We did measurements like thickness to detect is there any rusted area. For this lab session, we found out that the brake in this brake is in normal condition, although there is some rusted area and only some parts of them also in normal condition. This lab session makes us to learn that to inspect this brake and also brake pad to detect anywhere and also defect to avoid any accident happen. Thank you.